What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be checking out a keyboard that's been highly requested, and man, it's definitely pretty awesome. We're going to be reviewing the Asus ROG Falcon 65% Wireless Mechanical Keyboard. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on here, so we'll go through it all, the features, do a sound test, all that good stuff, in case you're interested in picking up the Falcon. Now this isn't brand new, I think it was announced last summer and started rolling out towards the holidays, but it admittedly flew under my radar a bit. And when it comes to, you know, gaming keyboards, especially a small compact form factor like a 65%, that definitely hits a sweet spot for a lot of people out there, because it's still got your main keys, plus the addition of dedicated arrow keys, which is something I know I personally can't live without. And yes, taking a look at it, it's very sleek, and the fact that it's wireless also is going to hit home for a lot of people, because you rarely see a wireless 65% gaming keyboard like this. Let's talk features. Taking a look around, on the left side is a touch bar, and this is crazy awesome. You can use it for volume control, media playback, really whatever you want. It's completely programmable, there's five input functions, so this touch sensitive strip can be anything. And above that, you'll see this light bar. And this is a real-time battery level indicator, so you can see how much juice you got left. So it'll also pulse to let you know when the battery level is getting below a certain percentage, um, or you can just have it sync to the RGB lighting effects. It's all customizable in their software, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Also, during the intro unboxing, you may have seen me take it out of this case it was packaged with. And that's because it comes with a polycarbonate keyboard cover. This is to keep it protected when not in use, or to shield it from collecting dust. It's a really nice idea from ASUS. And also you can use it to set your keyboard in to kind of diffuse that side RGB lighting. But they thought ahead enough to still have a cutout on the left side for access to the touch bar, and a cutout on the back side for the power button and USB-C port. And honestly, while most people might just like not even realize it's included and it'll just say in the packaging, I think it's a really nice addition. The top is like this brushed aluminum. It looks exactly like the design on their SCAR laptop. So I appreciate that, you know, consistent design language. And the inside is this grippy rubber. So it won't scratch the keyboard when you're using it. So while it's not like mind blowing or anything, it's still just really nice to see that level of innovation with a keyboard tray and a cover, as well as a touch bar on the keyboard. Little things like that go a long way because it's different. It's something new. Keycaps used here are PBT, but the quality of these is definitely on the lower end of PBT. You can tell that it's not that double shot mold injection, because they are a bit on the thinner side. But for the texture, it is very, very slight. Um, it doesn't have that shine or gloss, which is good, so it's not going to pick up on any fingerprints. And yes, the font they use here is definitely that aggressive gamer font. Like, there's no doubt about it. This is definitely a gaming keyboard in terms of looks and visuals. But also, I'm not like, I'm not going to knock Asus for that because they've never really tried to go for that clean minimal look like some gaming keyboards do asus is very you know well known for being a gaming company so this aggressive font while you know not my cup of tea it's like i said before consistent with their design language i will say though i'm not the biggest fan of the republic of gamers on the space bar but speaking of which since it is 65 percent on the front of some keys you still do have those secondary functions printed right there for you you have your f keys up top you can see media controls macro recording rgb light controls all printed on the front of some of the keycaps you can see what those secondary functions still are. And then popping off a keycap, they are using cherry red switches. And if you just saw my Corsair, what was that, the K, whatever review it was, 65, they also use cherry reds and I knocked them for it, mainly because those switches did not feel very smooth. They were definitely scratchy for a linear switch, but here, even though they're still using Cherry, obviously I would prefer them to use either their own sort of branded switch or maybe some sort of optical switch. At least here in this unit, they're not scratchy whatsoever. They're actually smooth linear switches like Reds are supposed to be. Reds have the 45 grams force to actuate at two millimeters and have a four millimeter total travel distance. So pretty much, you know, your standard linear switch out there. These are, you know, nothing different. But like I said, they're not scratchy. They actually feel pretty smooth. All right, so now we'll do a sound test of the Falcon with the cherry red switches inside.
Okay, so as you heard, definitely a fair bit of pinging going on in this board. Um, like I said before, the reds here do feel a lot smoother than other reds I've tried out there. So this particular batch of cherry reds is thankfully pretty good. Uh, but the reason we're getting that pinging and stuff is because of the frame. So the top plate is all aluminum. So when you're naturally, you know, typing and stuff and it's an exposed keyboard like this, that's going to ping and resonate a lot more. Um, as for the stabilizers here, they do slightly lube their CoStar stabilizers. What they did was, since they are plate mounted, they lubed the bar where it snaps into the actual stabilizer himself. So, it's not doing too much in terms of sound. It, it, technically, since there is that lube there, it's making it a bit... I don't know, there's less resistance when you press on those keys. But yes, that aluminum resonance is definitely pretty strong here. So now for my time gaming and using this, uh, really for a wireless keyboard, it was more than fine. It's not a like Bluetooth connection or anything. It does come with a USB dongle that you plug into your PC. So it's your standard like one millisecond, 2.4 gigahertz connection. But yeah, I had no issues in terms of like, you know, it lagging or cutting out or any sort of noticeable delay. Um, it felt just like a standard, you know, wired keyboard does, which is always good. You know, any sort of disconnection would obviously be a deal breaker for most keyboards, but here, all good stuff. Again, for gamers, yes, I know it's a more small, compact form factor, so you are missing out on, like, the numpad and stuff, but for those who really don't use that, I know not a lot of games and gamers really utilize a full numpad, uh, the fact that we have 68 keys in total here, and we still have those three dedicated arrow keys on the right side of the board, is definitely a great thing. I know for me, like, when it comes to video editing and stuff, um, that I definitely need dedicated arrow keys for jogging the timeline and certain keyframes, so having those there is definitely a lifesaver for me uh, but again I've never been a fan of full-size keyboards I'm more of a TKL guy myself so a 65% is the best of both worlds you combine a 60% plus some extra keys here now let's talk battery life because this is pretty damn impressive it boasts a 450 hour 4,000 milliamp hour battery that's definitely on the higher end and pretty impressive when it comes to a battery for a wireless keyboard like this. And obviously that 450 hours is rated with no RGB on, so depending on your brightness level or what effect you have going, it's gonna drain it more quickly. But with the USB-C port on the back, you can use this also wired if you want. This also supports quick charging. So a quick 30 minute charge gets you over 30 hours, which is still, that's you know more than the entire 24 hour day you're gonna be living and hopefully not gaming that entire time span. But yeah, quick charge on a keyboard, also pretty cool. Now check out the software. So Armory Crate is what they use that's consistent with their other like PC hardware and stuff. So it all sync together. Uh, the first tab for the keys is pretty much going in and reassigning what you want each key to be, uh, creating like certain macros and stuff can all be assigned to whatever key you want. Then you have the touch panel tab, which lets you get full control of that side touch panel. Like I said before, you have five different input functions that this can all be. And the stock, just to like show you real quick, if you just tap it in the middle, it pretty much does nothing. So I can go in and set that to be something like, you know, pausing music or muting music. So you have full control of what all those five functions can be for tapping and swiping. Uh, definitely easy to configure as well. Then you have the lighting tab on board itself. Like you can control it without the software uh, with the arrow keys again and the function key. But there are 11 effects in the software itself that you can go in and configure and change up like speeds and certain colors depending on what the actual effect is. It's all your pretty standard effects. And unfortunately, if you want to sort of like create your own custom effect and layer and stuff like that, you have to download their special Aura Creator, which is separate from this software. So that's kind of a bummer. And then lastly, you have the power tab, which is just for controlling like like the power consumption in terms of like when you want it to go idle after not being in use, save some battery and stuff like that. Then a firmware tab to update your keyboard. So at the end of the day, I'll leave you guys with this. The ROG Falcon for what it is, is very, very impressive. I know I referenced it a few times in this video, but when I just reviewed the Corsair K65 Mini, um, I admittedly, you know, knocked that pretty tough because it didn't do anything special. And I said numerous times, for that price, it needs to do something more. And for what this is, it is doing something more. It's giving you innovation. A touch sensitive side panel here, very cool to see on a keyboard. A light bar that lets you alert, that alerts you things like battery and stuff, very cool to see as well. The fact that it also has the keyboard tray that doubles then as a protective cover. It's great to see because companies, they stay safe. They don't really try new features. So the fact that we have an included carrying case or a protective case and a touch bar, I think is really great. Now it is 150, so it is, you know, a bit more pricey than your standard 60% wireless keyboard out there. Uh, but also you get the extra keys, a 65% keyboard. So it's doing a lot of good stuff that for me, 
really impressed me right off the bat. From my time unboxing it to using it, it's been all good things. There are some cons, yes, like I said before, uh, there's a fair bit of pinging and stuff, that's just naturally due to the material of the keyboard itself. Uh, the gamer font, you know, not for me, not a big con necessarily, everyone's gonna have their own opinion on keyboard aesthetics, uh, but the one thing I will say is it's not a really standard uh, keycap set for the backspace, enter, and right shift. Since the keyboard is doing a good job of staying compact and adding those extra keys on the side, um, it did sort of cut down on the actual size of those keys. So if you did want to buy your own keycap set, you would probably have to stick with these. Um, I guess, you know, depending on what sort of set you get, it may have smaller ones like that, uh, but those aren't your standard size is what I'm saying. But yes, at the end of the day, I know 150 is a bit more pricey, but man, I have to applaud Asus for putting out a new keyboard like this, hitting on all the good stuff, the, the wireless, 65%, and innovation, all love, all love for me. And guys, that'll wrap it up for my review of the Asus Falcon ROG or ROG Falcon. You get what I'm saying? Hope you all enjoyed. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link for you in the description down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.